All right. Hi, Todd. Can you hear us? Yeah, I've got you. You guys got me? Awesome. We have you. Thank you so much for joining us this um, Thursday before we all head to Talladega. Um, before we kick off with questions, just wanted to ask you a little bit about, um, obviously, this past weekend at the Bristol Dirt Race, you um, came home with a 10th place finish. So just talk a little bit about that race, but also just what that means for your team and, and a new team that's building together, um, you know, what it means to be able to take home a top 10. Yeah, um, you know, that was a really big day for us, um, for, for Petty GMS, myself. Um, first of all, winning a heat race was really cool to anytime you cross the checkered flag first in any kind of cup series race. That's a big deal. And uh, don't take that for granted, for sure, especially, um, you know, doing it with the 42, um, the number that Lee Petty, you know, brought to the series, made so famous and has passed down through so many drivers. And to do that on dirt in a heat race, it's kind of a cool throwback moment uh, for me personally um, and a good boost of confidence. You know, my, my goal was to go out there and, and win that heat race beforehand. And I was able to do so against uh, Kyle Larson, who um, is undoubtedly probably one of the best dirt racers, uh, out there and, and racers in general. Um, and, uh, along with Ricky Stenhouse and, and Chase Elliott's no slouch either on dirt. I think he spent most of the winter, uh, almost living with Larson and, and running, uh, midgets and different dirt cars. So, uh, he's a super talent himself. So I figured when I saw that heat race, you know, I, I, I circled that one as it was the most loaded heat race, including myself with a, a lar large amount of dirt background. So I wanted to go and, and prove to myself and, and others that, you know, uh, as a driver and especially on dirt, there's, uh, you know, I feel like I'm one of the best. So um, that was a huge vote of confidence for me. And, uh, you know, then starting the race in, in seventh uh, after all the passing points and everything, uh, driving straight up to second and, uh, you know, getting our first stage points of the year uh, and nine stage points is, is huge for sure. So, that was a great start. We were just kind of checking things off our list. And then the second stage, we, unfortunately, we were hung on the bottom quite a bit and fell back. And um, it was really tough in that race to, to restart on the bottom and, and go forward at all. I think if you go back and look at it, anybody who, who restarted on the bottom consecutively just fell back in the field. Uh, but we were able to have a strong enough, uh, you know, gain Camaro that I was able to drive back up the field, get a top 10 finish, which is another one of our goals. So, um, it's always good when you, you set high goals and you're able to accomplish them in a weekend. So we've got a lot of a lot of a lot of confidence going into Talladega, which is statistically probably my best track. And um, you know, hopefully keep that rolling and uh, just keep moving forward with momentum in this year. Awesome. All right. We're now gonna go to questions. If you have a question for Ty, feel free to raise your hand. And to kick us off with questions, we're gonna go to Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, good morning, Ty. You're 21st in points. Uh, I'm curious what, how, how would you evaluate that as far as season goes? And when you look at the points, you're saying, man, is top 20 a goal? Or is, you know, for a new team, it's just staying like in the top 25 the goal? You know, obviously we want to stay in the top 25. I think there's good financial benefits for the team and everyone involved. I think that's an expectation. And then we have goals, right? So um, being inside the top 20 would be a goal along with trying to get into the chase, um, winning a race. Um, but honestly, we just want to show progression. We want to, we want our team to get better week in and week out. And, you know, we, we've started pretty good. We fell back to 26 in the points and now we're kind of moving forward again. And I think for a new team, um, and you know, a full new situation where we're at and the guys we're around is, is, is a strong group of drivers. I think, the full points layout is a little bit different for everyone this year. I think the field is very solid all the way back to 28th in points. And, um, you know, if we can crack that top 20, I think that'd be a great thing, but we want to keep looking for more and we expect more out of it. I think especially with the speed that Eric's shown this year at some of the tracks, uh, I know I myself and our 42 team expects to have that kind of speed week in and week out. And if we can do that, um, we can go even higher in the points and we can be a, a chase contending team, a win, winning contending team. So, you know, there's a lot of goals out there that we believe are achievable. Uh, the expectation is to be inside the top 25 and show progression throughout the year and, and uh, you know, see where we end up at then. And 
you know, at day, for the Daytona 500, everybody's like, you know, we, we're not, we don't play conservative. It's the Daytona 500, you know, <laughs> but I'm curious at Talladega, considering still with the challenge of getting cars ready, is it the same mentality? I mean, do you expect like, you know, it's 50, 50, whether you're going to finish or end up wrecked. These weeks are always weird for me because, you know, I'm thinking the same things you guys are, you know, what's it going to be like? It's going to be aggressive. It's going to be calm. Speed week seemed calm up until the Daytona 500 and we started the race and people are bump drafting on lap one. And I'm big, uh, big proponent of feeling the energy of the race. And I uh, just got off a meeting with my guys and I said, this, this is the hardest race for me to prepare for. I just go off of what I feel and it may change within a lap of, you know, don't feel like we can get up there and, and put ourselves in a good spot to get stage points around up front. That's obviously where you'd like to be. Or do, do I feel a bad energy in the pack and people doing things they shouldn't at the, at a certain time. Um, and, and it's, for me, it's just, I, I won't know until I'm in, in the situation. Um, I don't think anybody showed much patience in the 500, but also in my opinion, no one showed any patience in the last, three years of, of super speedway races. Um, if you look back, there's maybe 15 cars on the lead lap due to crashes and, and issues every race. And, um, you know, my strategy is sometimes can seem conservative, but I also have one of the best average finishes of the last four or five years at some of these speedways. So uh, until they prove me otherwise, uh, I'm going to play a smart game, feel the energy of the pack, get stage points if it's, um, if it's a good, you know, feels right and, and we have the speed to do it and we're in the right situation. Uh, but if not, I got to make sure our, our black rifle Camaro crosses the line on the lead lap. And I can pretty much almost guarantee us the top 15 or top 10 in that way. Thanks. Okay. Our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Hey, hey, Ty, can you give me um, a sense, looking at the first quarter of the season, and even with the new car, in essence, you're seeing the, the same top teams win, uh, uh, the, the top ten, uh, top, the top tens, um, the top tens for teams are, are very similar from year to year. And like I said, the, the top teams are, are mostly winning the races. So how much of an impact, we, you know, kept hearing that the, this new car was going to be more of an equalizer. Is it an equalizer in some ways that you can't see maybe through wins and top tens? Or is it a case that, you know, these bigger teams have the bigger resources and the expectation was that they were going to find things before everybody else? Yeah, you know, I think it's a good question. I just think um, a little bit of both, right? So the top teams obviously have always had the most money and resources, and that's always helpful. But they also have some of the best people and and best drivers crew chiefs because they have the same amount of money to to go out and and pay for them um not taking away from any other teams and they're going to put a good effort forward i think that's why you see the top teams winning um, good winning teams win races and no matter what you put them in winning drivers will do the same um so you know i think it's a little bit of a balance there but i think you're seeing within teams uh, week to week you don't know which driver within that team might win or might be two laps down. It's been quite fascinating. Um, you see two Hendrick cars run really good and two run really bad. You'll see one RCR car good, one RCR car bad. Same thing with us at Petty GMS. Like, seems like we haven't had really one weekend where we've both been, you know, really, really strong, but we've both had our strong weeks. So um, it's a, this car has a real fine line. And it's seemingly when the driver crew chief team combo hits the right, the right setup at the right time uh, you take off and you can have a chance and I haven't had a weekend where I've gone into it where I don't believe that if if we hit it right we can win we, we can win the race and I didn't feel that way in the past and I think this car provides that for everyone so um, I still very feel very confident that at Petty GMS when we hit it right we're going to have a chance to win a race and I think this past weekend was a was a real show of that and um we, we could have won that race if we were in the right spot at the right time there at the end of the race and different things would have, would have worked out in our favor strategy and rain wise. So um, I think you're never out of it with this car, which is, is a welcoming sign. There's obviously, you know, money always wins in everything and, and we need to continue to get more sponsorship for our team and, and provide more resources for everybody. And 
Um, we're working hard at that. We're a young, growing team. We're doing really good. Maury Gallagher is putting so much into our program, and it's uh, it's very exciting to be a part of this this team because our own to win, and he's nothing shy of as, as important. Um, and then you throw, you know, Richard Petty in there, and he has that winning mindset. He knows he's he's the most winning driver in our sport. So we have so much excitement and promise around our team, and we're we're very new and very uh, in a youthful stage as a team, and uh, figuring a lot of things out. We, you know, both teams, my team and Eric, have had ups and downs throughout this season, and you know, it's kind of funny. We're starting to kind of meet back up in the points, and um, it's a. Uh, but I guess to circle back and answer your question. The good teams are going to be good, but I think you look in within these teams and why we've had so many different winners is you never know when the right person's going to hit hit the setup. You know, I think Eric could have possibly won Fontana uh, if things would have went the right way. So um, it's it's an exciting time in our sport, and and I look forward to every weekend because I feel like I've legit shot to win. I can see it as a driver. You can see speed differences. You can feel things of like okay, we're just getting outdone by money or we're just getting outdone by, you know, putting the right pieces together. And I think every weekend this weekend, this year, I have felt like it's just a matter of us putting the pieces together. It's all there for us. And certainly Mike Beam and Maury and Petty GMS has given us every opportunity to do that. And I feel like we're right there. And in the past, I really haven't felt like, you know, even if we do it perfect, we can win the race. I, I felt like in the past, uh, with the old car and the old system. And even if we did everything perfect, maybe it was a top 15, but I feel like if everything's done perfect now, we can win races. So that's always exciting for a driver. And, and I think you're going to, you're going to continue to see more new winners. And, and uh, I think you're going to have to win a race to be in the chase this year. Hey, Ty, I also wanted to ask you, um, Look, and, and throughout the world, a lot of people have to work on Easter. So this, uh, um, obviously, this was a new thing for fan for for the sport this year with uh, the Easter race. The, the numbers seem to indicate that uh, Easter is something that uh, probably will be back on the schedule. What kind of an adjustment is that for this sport? Like I said, you know, the working world, there's a lot of people that work on Easter. This was a new thing for the sport. What are the adjustments and the idea that this is this is probably going to be on the schedule moving forward? Yeah, I know it's a it's a tough spot for our sport. I know our sport respects family and, and faith and, and respects holidays of, of all communities and, and cultures. And it's a tough balance. Um, you know, for me, I don't know if I get to speak from a, a very fair vantage point. I'm lucky enough to travel with my family and, you know, my my brother and his family's there and my mom and dad, and my grandfather. So I got to you know, have Easter with, with my whole family, but I have a very unique situation. But then I look at um, my friends and, and employees at Petty and GMS and across the garage that, you know, didn't get to have that for the first time in a long time. And, and that's tough. And uh, then you get, then you hear from our sport, you know, and, and we're, we're in a, such a great point in our sport and everything's trending up and we have our best viewership of a race um, you know, at, at Bristol since 2016. And, uh, you know, it puts everybody in a tough spot. Um, but I think there's a way to go about it. I think there's a way to maybe schedule the Saturday event early enough with the heat races. Um, maybe do them early in the morning on Saturday, give people time to go home. And, you know, most most team members are within a two-hour drive of home or the owners in, in the sports should pay for the guys to fly home and fly back on Sunday. If we're going to do a Sunday night race, plan everything to give the guys a 12 to 18 hour stretch where they can choose to go home, be with their families, plan around that and be able to come back for the race that night. Because even flying home, Petty GMS, we flew, which was nice for the families, at least to get home on Sunday night, but we still didn't get in bed till one 30 and there's teams that had to drive home. And, and, you know, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough weekend. And, and it definitely doesn't help the families back at home. So, um, you know, there's a balance. I think we can work the schedule and I think the owners and NASCAR in general uh, have to work together to, to do as much for their, their employees as possible in that situation. That's the way I see it. Um, but it's a very positive thing that we had great viewership. I know next year it's going to be going up against the masters, which is going to be, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, so we, we just got to work together and figure, figure it out because 
these these people who work so hard deserve time with their families, especially when you look at our schedule this year. We have one off weekend uh, throughout this whole year, and that is brutal. That is really tough, especially with a new car, um, you know, early in the season, a, a massive sh shortage in parts, and there's still teams that are scrambling, working to 7 to 8 to 9 to midnight every night and then turn around and racing. Um you know, it's all good because we're, we want the sport to succeed, but eventually you burn people out and uh, we, we've got to take care of our people. That's what makes the sport so important. And, um, you know, we just got to look at, at some of these things to give some breaks to, to people, whether it's, you know, the way that we travel or, or plan out weekends. I think there's plenty of time there, especially this past weekend, to, to do a lot more for the people. Thank you. All right, our next question will go to Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you, and thanks for joining us, Ty. Uh, just curious, um, Bristol, the, when they had sent out the ticket, um, you know, potential for sales for next year, it's the week after. My question to you, and I know you and your brother raced a lot of dirt before getting to NASCAR and raced in between just, you know, to learn car control and, the, you know, the, the um, discipline that dirt adds to, racing in general but overall how do you characterize the race there are a lot of pundits who are complaining about the the dirt track racing element of it um you know from my seat up in the press box i found it very entertaining and i'm just wondering if you really believe that this is something that should be included on the schedule as a points paying race i do i think a lot of our drivers just like to complain because they're bored and uh, sometimes just want something to talk about and um, try to show emotion in that way. And I mean, I think you just got to look at it a lot less selfishly. Um, you know, so what if you get a little dirty? So what if it doesn't know we're all on the same track and we're all doing it together? And, um, you know, the only thing that's going to make this sport continue to grow and and be good for everyone is, is to have a positive outlook and, and see what, what worked and how we can make the things that didn't work as good better and, and move forward positively. But um, you know, never bashing anything unless it's dangerous. Um, and, and there's nothing about that race that's dangerous. I thought it was fun. I thought if you look at the first year to the second year, it massively improved. Um, sometimes people aren't patient enough to let something kind of mature and grow into what it really can be. And sometimes we're quick to snap judge and say, this isn't going to work. And this is, this is stupid. And I just think that's just not a, a healthy way to look at things in our sport. And um, I enjoy the fact that NASCAR is choosing a different way to go about racing at different tracks and, and trying to do things for our fans. I think if you take your driver selfishness hat off and you look at it globally, that was an awesome event. Um, and you think of all the things that we fixed from the previous event, that was great. And there's another list of things that we can continue to do to grow in, but to say this race isn't worth it and hope we don't go back. I think that's kind of ridiculous. Um, I was surprised by some of the comments from some of the drivers. I think you just, you look at the attitude of the drivers and uh, you know, where the guys who liked the race ran good and the guys who didn't like the race ran bad. And I think, um, you know, mindset of approach of, you know, what you want to be a part of definitely helps, um, you know, have a better weekend. And so I grew up dirt racing. I haven't dirt raced in five years. So that was my first dirt race other than the Eldora truck races that I've ran. And I, and I enjoyed it. And the, the part of that element, when you go to a Saturday night dirt track or weekend dirt track is things are moving and things aren't always the same. You don't show up to the same track with the same bump and the same groove every single weekend. And in fact, it's not the same from the time that you unload your car to the time that the checker flag waves. Every lap you're moving and changing, adjusting your car, and um, it makes it tough. But that's why we chose to go dirt racing is to throw something different at it. And um, I think the big win was the dust was down and the track had multiple grooves. Um, there was passing. Yes, is it hard? But yes, it's also hard to pass at Bristol. Um, when it's when it's concrete so I think I had the most passes with 58 or 59 and that's a lot of passes so um, you know it's it, it's possible you just gotta you know be be into it and uh, embrace the fact that it's good for our sport and what's good for our sport is good for us.
Mother Nature certainly had, you know, her say the first year we went there and it was really hard to get the track condition, but from the driver's seat, you found the, the dirt this time a lot more, um, you know, I guess more competitive to race on and did the banking help as well? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know a whole lot about dirt, but so just other than my background, I know they did things different from my vantage point from what I know is different is I think they added some calcium into the into the dirt um, to hold moisture in it a little bit better. Whether that was the cure or not, I'm, I'm not sure. But, you know, our daytime practice got pretty dusty at one point. But I think the biggest win was moving it to a night race. Um, it holds moisture in the air, especially in the early spring. But uh, the bank did a great job of, I don't know, you know, what what uh, metrics led into that, um, but they were right in taking uh, banking out of the bottom, adding it to the top. I think it was a really good race. So I thought everything went great, and I think we can improve it even further. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, our next question will go to Brendan Carroll. Go ahead, Brendan. Okay, so Ty, you've been on a single car team for most of your cup career. Uh, what is it like having a teammate this year? It's been great. You know, it's a it's an adjustment for me. Um, like you said, I've I've only been a single car car uh, driver for for my whole career, so just adjusting to that dynamic it's not always easy. Um, you're learning personalities and the whole team isn't centered around you. It's, it's around two cars. And, um, it, it's helped me a lot to learn, um, from, from Eric, from Dave, from the 43 team, they've had such good speed and they've set a good expectation, which I really appreciate. And, um, uh, the opportunity to know where your team can be is always so good. And, you know, if they're having a strong weekend, we can look at them and say, okay, this is where we need to get to, or we're having a strong weekend, they can do the same. So um, I'm a very competitive person, but I'm also, uh, you know, enjoy being a team player. And um, I believe that together we can push each other to move Petty GMS to all the years go on. And, um, so I'm enjoying having a teammate in, in that dynamic and, um, can't wait to see how we kind of grow in, in that together. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. All right, Dustin, did you have a follow-up question by chance? Um, no, I guess it was just left up. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Just wanted to double check. Well, uh, thank you again so much for your time today. And we wish you the best of luck this weekend in Talladega. All right. Thank you, guys.